take us back. What, what was your reaction when you first got the call and someone said, Jill, we reckon that you'd be quite good at fronting the snooker. What was your initial reaction? Come on, be honest. Uh, well, it was a long time ago and uh, I was talking to them about working in the rugby and, and the Rugby World Cup. And then they said, but you know, it'd be good to get you doing some other things as well. Have you ever done snooker? And I did pause for a second, Rob, um, because I hadn't done a lot of snooker, but I did once work on an embassy regal masters type event in Motherwell back in the day for BBC Scotland. So I did, I, you know, I wasn't lying. And of course, I loved snooker. Anybody who grew up in the 80s, you know, had grown up watching the greats of snooker. So I said, yep, yeah, no, it sounds great. And we did the Haiku Open uh, in the middle of the night from a studio in uh, Chiswick, myself and Neil Folds uh, and the great Clive Everton. And um, I thought, we finished it. And I, it was not a great broadcasting. Uh, <laughs> it, you know, it, didn't, it wasn't going to win any awards, let's be honest. Although Mark Allen won, uh, and it was an interesting competition. And I remember at the end of it saying, well, I don't think they'll let us do that again, but it was a really interesting thing to do. And, and then we got the champion of champions and the rest, as they say, is history. So it wasn't a glorious debut, but it, I think we've built on that early tournament. Oh, you've been there right from the beginning, as has Neil Folds. And was it that first high cow or was it the second one? where you both corpsed, because that, was, that was a great thing. moment. Yeah, no, that was the first haiku open, and I didn't know Fulty that well. Obviously, I've got to know him now. He's, I, you know, he's one of my best mates, and I, and I love spending time with him. He's one of the most amusing and funny men to spend time with, but he does make me laugh badly. And we'd been out for a curry. Clive, with his wonderful um, mustard-coloured blazer, had leant across his sleeve, had got into the curry, and he'd almost scooped it up, and he was devastated. His favourite jacket was ruined. <laughs> and Neil and I were oh, what careful Clive. Anyway, he, br he brought this up live on air after a waistcoat foul, and I just lost the, the place completely. And it's not the, it's not the only time it's happened with Folds and I. Um, so it wasn't glorious, no, but it was very, very funny. <laughs> and, you know, what, what I've really enjoyed about being part of the ITV crew for the last couple of years, it's, it's, it's highly professional, but it's informal in a way that it genuinely feels as though you're interacting and broadcasting with mates. And that lovely dynamic in the studio, you know, with Hendry occasionally playing the grumpy old man, and McManus coming in, and then there's Ken there and Neil. It, it's a brilliant dynamic of pundits for you to work with, isn't it? Oh, the best in the business. You know, I, I'm so, so fortunate to work with these guys. Um, it was Fulzi and I on our own to begin with, uh, and then Alan McManus joined, and then Stephen came in. We were doing a tournament in Manchester, uh, and we weren't quite sure how Stephen would manage with the ITV, because we're on here for hours and hours and hours. It's a long shift, but, you know, Stephen just, became part of the crew and then Ken came in as well with that laugh of his that just I mean we are good good mates and we, lo we look forward to spending time together because we spend a lot of time together when we're on the snooker um, but they're mates you know I speak to them most days we're, we're on whatsapp groups we, we're, we're in touch a lot and I really people say do you, how much, you, know, do you love the snooker and I say I, I do love the snooker I love the people in snooker the players the people behind the scenes the crew we work with and for me, the pundits, they're like, it's like going off with your mates for a, for a week's jolly watching some snooker. It's, it's a lot of fun. And yeah, and, and what, what I've realised about Stephen over the years, he's got an amazing sense of humour. And you, you do, the players do have to earn a compliment from him the hard way. And, and when, he needs to, when he needs to do a little put down, he's brutal, but he's seven times, so he can get away with it. I know, we call him seven times or five sides <laughs> <laughs> because when we go out for a curry, he likes, he likes to add, embellish what he's having with some sides. So uh, yeah, but he never takes himself too seriously. And he's one, of the, he's one of the few people, you know, who is absolutely brilliant at what they do, you know, in any walk of life. You know, to be that brilliant at what you do, what an absolute privilege to spend time with him. And so when he says something, you, you listen because, you know, he, he is who he is. Um, and and he's, a, he's humble about it sometimes. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, and, and when he speaks, you kind of do listen, you know. It's, it's a funny job what we do, isn't it? And it's a precarious way to make a living, but... We're so lucky to work with fantastic sportsmen and women and just to be in an environment where we laugh when we work. We're so lucky. Listen, it's sport, you know, and we're sitting ringside watching the very, very best in the business performing at the highest level. And with snooker, you know, you can have the best in the business and they don't always win. You know, it's not like a, a horse race or a, a sprint 
or a marathon where you see people who chances are they're going to win if they're the best in the field. In snooker, anything can happen and you get surprises, you get upsets. Um, and we're there on the side of the table enjoying every minute of it. And, and we see every minute of it. You know, we're not going off air and taking out the afternoon off or coming back on late or, oh, we'll leave it there and come back to it tomorrow. It's, we're there watching it, and which is an absolute privilege. And the chance to speak to the players so soon after they come off the table is extraordinary. So, you know, I think to work in sport is, is a gift, really. And, and we're so privileged to be involved in sport because... You know, it's destination viewing, so people want to watch it live. They want to see the, the stories unfold as they happen, um, and to be involved in it. You know, I've been very, very lucky over the years to, to be involved in all sorts of sporting events. But certainly, the snooker is is you know one of the great parts of my year. You know, I look forward to the different tournaments, the narrative, the stories, the characters, the individuals that come in, and you, you know. You just enjoy it. I think I just, you know, I just look forward to it and enjoy it enormously. And, and just finally, uh, you know, we, we're hooking up here as I, I'm halfway through or nearly at the end of my charity exploits. I just wanted to touch on all the stuff you've done around, you know, the late great Doddy. I saw a couple of guys wearing Doddy shirts when I was up in Scotland on my way down, and then I looked up online. A guy had carried a dumbbell uh, in aid of MND for, for Doddy up to the top of Ben Nevis. I'm guessing that you've derived almost as much satisfaction from all that you've done and being honoured for your work for Doddy and, and towards finding a cure for MND. I imagine that's as satisfying for you as all the great broadcasting moments you've anchored. Yeah, it's been uh, an incredible experience over the last six years. Um, obviously, starting with Doddy being diagnosed, which was devastating for all of us, and particularly his family, obviously, and his close friends, and to see the way the disease affected him and his family, you know, the deterioration over the years and then sadly we lost Doddy um, last year. Um, but alongside that we were able to create this amazing foundation, My Name's Doddy Foundation, and we've raised huge amounts of money which we're investing into really important research uh, and helping families living with the disease. So it has been hugely satisfying. It's, um, it's humbling to see the way people respond to Doddy and to what we're trying to achieve. We're making a big noise in that space and um, we've shone a big light on motor neuron disease. I think that's been really important. So people maybe are more aware of the disease now uh, and trying to get more money invested in research because we need a breakthrough. We need something because it is the most horrific of diseases. So it's been a real, uh, it's been a real experience um, and the work goes on, you know. We lost Doddy, but he was determined we would carry on the work. And so, yeah, I, I enjoy it very much. I work with some amazing, amazing people, um, some very generous people, so that's been great. And, you know, you, you yourself, Rob, you're doing this because of friends you lost, people that were important to you in your life uh, and their families, and, and that's kind of how I got involved with, with My Name's Doddy Foundation, and that's why this really resonates with me. Sometimes putting yourself out there for absent friends, it's so important, and I you know, have massive respect for you for what you're doing. It really means an awful lot. It'll mean a huge amount to those people that you've lost for their families and friends but just to see you doing this putting yourself out there mm. is is extraordinary so you know, take my hat off to you